Hey everybody, it's Wednesday. What does that mean? It means it is time for the Witches Movie Coven. Grab your goat, grab something to drink, perhaps grab some popcorn and a nice cloak to warm up in because we're going to talk about Midnight Offering. My name is Patty Negri. I am one of your five fabulous hosts. You might know me from Ghost Adventures or from my podcast, The Witching Hour, or from Bathroom Walls Across America. And Jason, who are you? I'm Jason Makey. I've written nine books for Llewellyn Worldwide on the subject of witchcraft. And I'm in the home of our producers, Christine and Rob, in L.A. and going to see Patty uh, shortly. It's very exciting <laughs> to be here. It's, it feels like a very special episode to me because of where I'm at, which seems very fitting for a 1982 movie because this is a very special movie. It, it is a special movie. And did you bring this cold weather with you, though? What is this fog today, miss? That is not us. It's raining where we're at. And also, I live in a city called Sunnyvale. I do not live in San Francisco. Sunnyvale lives up to its name. It is very sunny there. So this is not really? me. I okay. can be blamed for many we'll things. Okay, yeah. Heather. Hi, um, I am so excited because I'm hoping my Wi-Fi is going to be really good because my office is now wired to the internet. So I am now graduated into the 2000s. So this is fantastic. But other than that, I am Heather Green. I am the author of Lights, Camera, Witchcraft, a definitive guide on witches in movies, uh, American movies and television. Um, and I am a journalist that covers occult topics as well as an acquisitions editor at Llewellyn. So all things occult and writing. Very fun. Thank you. Richard Lale. That would be me. Hi, I'm Richard Lale. Richard Lale is one name, not two. If I were just Richard, I would be. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you know what it is. Uh, so I am known as the gentleman psychic. I'm a psychic and a medium. I used to be a psychic and a small, but I gained a lot of weight. Um, thank you very much. I mm -hmm. used to do stand up, and then I found I make more money on my back. Um, that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> and you I am here in New Orleans. You would, you might have seen me from. Uh, ghost adventures or from the the fact that my voice is all over TikTok. That's another yeah. thing. There are fakes out there, but there's only one, the Richard Lale. There's only one. Thank you. And last and never least, Miss Courtney. <gasps> That's me. Uh, hi, I'm Courtney Buckley. I am ghost bait from Scared and Alone. I am uh, Salem tour guide and witch and something very amazing happened to me this week guys that i think you would all appreciate um as a follow-up to the um jehovah's witness story that i told a couple weeks ago i found jesus <laughs> where was he um at, believe it or not this is probably the most shocking part of this story he was at richard lale's house and he glows in the dark and richard lale sent him to me and I still can you turn off later, your light so we can see him glow? No, because it's all the way over there, and I'm too lazy to get up. Um, but I'm just really impressed with the speed at which Richard Lil sent this. Um, as the birthday present that I bought for him two years ago is still sitting on my dining room table. <laughs> Beautiful. <Sunday. laughs> Well, congratulations. I think this should be a special night. I just have to tell you that I've got some ghosty stuff going on. It's fine. I was filming all day, and I was, for the first time since before the pandemic, using my gravestone Ouija board made from a real gravestone. And my award, my Parapod Award for TV Medium, flew off my table over here next to Belle, my haunted doll. I was nowhere near. My dog was nowhere near. My cat was nowhere and broke. I reached down to pick it up and started profusely bleeding. I sliced like a slice of bologna on my thumb. So it's going to be a good night for witchcraft and witchcraft movie. Now this movie, I watched it for the first time last night, but for any of you who have not perhaps watched it yet, Richard Lale, do we have an unbiased opinion of or <laughs> explanation of this movie? I certainly do. So um, it took me five times to try to get through this film. I'm not going to tell you anything about <laughs> what I feel about it until afterwards, but it took me five times to sit through this film, um, 10, 15 minutes at a time, five times. 
Anyway, uh, it's a story about um, a young witch who moves to a new school. She doesn't realize she's a witch until she meets a bad witch. And uh, this, this, this other witch happens to call upon no less than five different deities, including Satan. And all of them apparently grant her request to do crazy things, like get her, her boyfriend back on the team of the football league, even though he's, he's the captain and he has the skinniest legs ever. So I don't know what kind of football he's doing. But anyway, he's the captain of the football league and he's on the team. And, the, and this new girl comes to the school and instantly falls in love with the, the, the footballer and discovers that she's a witch. And then uh, they, they have a battle and the, they have to be brought back to the school, which apparently there's a bonfire for whatever reason on the football field. Why is there a bonfire? I don't know. It's 1981. Um, and then she has gone over and, 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 and learned that she can use the powers of her mind, but she's lured there to the bonfire where she is somehow strapped to the fire, burn, witch, burn. And then her mother shows up who was also a witch, but repressed. And then the mother somehow ends her own life by releasing the good witch from the bonfire. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It was, it was not happy days. It was, it, in case those of you didn't know, uh, Marion Ross from Happy Days was, was in the film and it was not, it was not happy days. <laughs> it, it was not happy days. <laughs> thank you thank you richard lyle we understand it completely now though it seems, never seems like you watch the same movie that i watched. <laughs> oh i watched richard lyle's movie <laughs> <laughs> oh i want to say happy birthday calvin in there i thank you guys are all jumping in hello everybody we are reading it hi Haley. hi richard hi Catherine. hi wicked conjurings rd faucet Sacred love. All you guys, we are throwing these up as we can and we are watching as we go if we don't mention it. So we love your participation. Um, all right. Is this one that you can give us a different explanation of the film? Miss Heather, is this something that's in your beautiful book? Absolutely. Um, you know, and and what I'm gonna say right now is so everyone understands is that when you're when we're looking at the way witches and witchcraft has been represented across time, we're not the most and, and I realized this in doing the research for my book, sometimes the most obscure movies or not even the best movies or not even ones that made the silver screen are going to be the most interesting in terms of the evolution and the way witchcraft has been presented in Hollywood and, and by Hollywood uh, folk. And so this one is one of those. It's not a movie that is going to win an Academy Award, um, although Richard Lale may disagree with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one that even made the silver screen it was a made for tv movie which you can probably see and that's why you can only get it on youtube it is not one that is going to win anybody um uh is not going to ever make anybody's top 10 list however however when you're looking at witchcraft movies and the way they were presented, this movie is really positioned and it has a lot of interesting things to think about. And that's why I kind of, I spent a, some time on it in my book, not chapters, don't worry, <laughs> just paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why this is interesting, there's several things we can talk about. First of all, this is one of the last movies in the first wave of witchcraft films, okay? During that period of time, during the 70s, was the first time we actually saw movies interact and, and uh, merge with the modern witchcraft movement. So it's the first time we start to see the language that you actually might recognize in a witchcraft circle, even if it's not placed in the best way, it's still there. You heard the word blessed be in this movie. This is one of the last ones, not the first one in the 70s, but it is one of the last ones before the satanic panic takes hold and we move away from it. So over this period of time from the late 60s through the 70s to this period, of period we see consistently witchcraft language, modern witchcraft language, things that as witches we might recognize infused, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not great, um, even if it's not used narratively in the best light, 
we start to see it. So this is one aspect of it that's interesting. The other aspect of this movie that's interesting is that this was the la this was a the lighter part of the 70s 70s is when we saw the witchcraft teen films the witchcraft teen films mostly horror 99 percent in this case horror although you see some later that are different witchcraft teen movies are pretty much high school teen movies with a witchcraft bent mostly horror like i said so the, carrie really started that off um and then you see a bunch of them made for tv movies you have the initiation of sarah you have satan's school for girls actually satan's school for girls is earlier but it's still the same premise you have a great Wes Craven movie called um, Summer of Fear. Really, really fun to watch, Wes Craven. Um, you have The Spell. You have a series that Carrie set off. This is the last one. So this is the last one in many ways. And then we don't really see this genre. We don't really see um, this this entire piece of what we're seeing, the narrative, the witchcraft, the horror, all this stuff, until the craft. And the, including the infusion of real witchcraft. We have Teen Witch, which is more of a comedy, romantic comedy that happens in the 80s. That's not the same thing. Partially not the same thing. It isn't until the craft we see this again. So I like to call this film a proto-craft. Proto the craft. It's an early version of the craft. It has similar setup. It has similar issues it's dealing with. You know, who's popular, who's not, social high school, who has power, who has... And there's a lot of other things to talk about with regards to how witchcraft is represented in this film. So there's lots of fun stuff to talk about, no matter whether you liked it or not. There's a lot of really interesting witchcraft stuff to talk about in this movie, which, um, which is why I always recommend people watch it. Um, so I will leave it at that. Um, I do will I will add that the main character um, was uh, Melissa Melissa Sue Anderson. Melissa Sue An is that right? Uh, Melissa Sue Anderson yeah. was was in one of my favorite shows as a child, which was L Little House on the Prairie, and I believe Mary Beth McDonough is that that's um, she was in the Waltons. So she the characters. So somebody, I, I was and reading. Minx had Repairman was on K, WKRP in yeah, Cincinnati. So, he was also one of the other guys. The no, great no, Gordon no. Jump. So you have so many recognizable actresses and uh, actors at, in this that are fun. And I, I'm going to tell you, I love me some Little House on the Prairie. So I was always happy to see, you know, that was that was pretty cool. So anyway, moving on. I'll give my opinions later. I'll talk more later. Someone else go. <laughs> <laughs> I hated this movie. I, I will. I will give my opinions now. Um, as <laughs> someone who was made in the '80s, I feel uniquely qualified to say that not everything that was made in the '80s was uh, was great. Um, this being one of them, I feel like um, if I was Jason. Wait, wait, wait. On. This was this was 1980. So we have to qualify. It's not I was made in, at this point. I was it was 81 <laughs> and I was made in 86 and that's, you know, it's yeah. all the same decade and I'm a little ashamed <laughs> that I came from the same decade as this. Uh -oh. Anyway, that's a little harsh, Courtney. You know, it was painful coming from the woman who watch. loves her, your highness. I mean, that yeah. is a little harsh. And we discussed earlier, uh, what was it last week that that you also loved it because I did some girl math and we figured that out. So anyway, um, I fuzzy math. It's called Ooh. witch math. So uh, anyway, it was. I don't know. I think part of it for me, I obviously I'd never seen it before, but part of it for me was watching it on YouTube, I think took away from it a little bit where I just visually found it hard to look at with my eyes. Then came the haircuts and that was a real big <laughs> Again, that's 80s though, that you can't, I, you can't I lived you through it. I see by the haircuts. I didn't need to go back. Okay. I lived through it. I didn't need to go back. I, I did appreciate the witchcraft in it. I liked that it, it was heavy on the witchcraft, and I liked that a lot. However, if I was going to spend an hour and a half of my time to watch something like that, heavy on the witchcraft, I'd watch the craft, because that was way better. So I have some quotes. I don't have a lot, because it was hard. Most of it was me writing down thoughts of how I was making fun of everybody. Um, I was not nice to this movie while I was watching it. 
So there you have it. I watched the same movie as Richard Lowe. You know, okay. it's... So <laughs> it, you know, I, I, this is not a movie I would have watched on my own. And I feel like this is the kind of movie that only Heather Green knows about because it's a historical witchcraft movie. But it's very much a product of its time, and it reminded me of happier times in the 80s where people would take a break from whatever sitcom they were shooting or Little House on the Prairie, and they would all go in and they would make a TV movie, and you got to see some familiar faces do something that was not necessarily thought to be in their wheelhouse, and I thought they pulled it off. I don't think it's that bad. And I was it's really also surprised. not that good. I was <laughs> for 1981 that they're using the word athame. They uh -huh. do say blessed be once. They also say blessed be at one yes. point too. And I was like, what? It's like I could tell you're doing the research, but not all the research when you say blessed be. But you know, it's a it's a generic movie that was shown in the middle of February on the ABC network. Uh -huh. And in that sense, yeah, yeah. I think it was very good for what it was. And a surprisingly kind of almost accurate take on witchcraft in some regards, uh -huh. because they're using real witch words and they're showing spells. I mean, I was a little weirded out when it opens with our, our antagonist calling upon 97 different deities to <laughs> Well, and Satan. No, wait, and, yeah. no, but you see, the thing is, is that in in her, if you look at, if you read Mastering Witchcraft, which I'm sure you guys have, or at least part of it, and you you look at, and so just mm -hmm. uh, just to your point, is that Paul Hewson was in Hollywood at this time. He was actually producing Tucker's Witch, which came out I think the next year. So he was his book was definitely floating around as long as uh, as well as. Uh, gardeners and so they were pulling from different things but if you look a lot of the gods i think she's the deity she keeps calling i think she's using those terms to mean satan in all cases that's mm -hmm. that's the way i i read that except for hecate and the rest of them were i think just names for satan i think that's Other what demons i think they're mostly demons, demons and, yeah yeah and you warned us so this is a little history too heather yeah. warned us when we go in she goes read paul houston's mastering witchcraft and Paul Houston's Mastering Witchcraft is a really influential book in the history of the witchcraft uh -huh. revival. It came out in 1970, and uh -huh. it was published by a major publisher, unlike Gerald Gardner's books, so it was very easily available. And it had the first things that we would really recognize today as witchcraft. There's a little bit of the charge of the goddess in it. There are deities that are familiar to us. There's also a lot of things that are very, very different to, in some regards. But I would really say it's sort of the first modern witchcraft primer, like how-to book that had ever been published. And it certainly would have been very easily available in 1981. And it would make sense out of all the books at the time to pick that one up more than anyone else. Because it looks like people in Hollywood probably think witchcraft looks a little threatening, a little scary. And, you know, not Starhawk's The Spiral Dance, which is, you know, much happier i think in some regards <laughs> mastering witchcraft with the word warlock on it too you know probably plays into those things that hollywood is expecting witchcraft to be and and paul Houston worked in hollywood he was a screenwriter yeah. um for years and he was a consultant and like i said at this at this period of time he was actually producing uh and and creating tucker's witch which was a short-lived tv series about a witch so um, this was about the same time. So he was very present. So his book definitely would have been available to screenwriters. He probably was passing it around, you know. So um, and you can see it. He talks about by Barabbas, by Satanas. He he has yeah, the words yeah. that they use in his book. His book you can find in a lot of seventies. But yes, yes. And Kelvin makes a point too. Ironically, she pronounced Kernonos wrong. I heard that yes. while I was watching the movie. They're trying to I, say Kernonos. <laughs> And they say Sir Nunos or something like that. And I was like, how, how did she pronounce it? I thought of you immediately, Jason, when she said it. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Jason's gonna be all was, over that. <laughs> it was not with the hard C. It was with it was with the S. So yeah. But, yeah, because I just thought that was some whispering speech. Yeah. yeah. I, um I I had a hard time following through. I, I had a hard time I, even beyond the mispronunciations. I had a hard time. I turned it on and I would go, okay, 
I'm going to do this. I am. I I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Oh, crap. I can't. I can't. <laughs> can't. Was, was it the haircuts? I mean, the haircuts were bad. I could deal with the haircuts. You know what, though? The thing is where all of these people were from all of these television shows, I, it should be noted I also couldn't stand them on the television shows. So... <sighs> I didn't like Little House on the Prairie. I couldn't stand Happy Days. I Mrs. Only, C, come on. I didn't like. I didn't like them. I didn't like it, and I. I thought it was hokey. I thought it was just hokey. And I. And there was no. Yeah, there he is. There's WKRP. There's, there's <laughs> yeah. So I didn't. I never actually watched any of the shows that these people were on, and I thought. I thought the whole thing was. I thought the acting was horrible. I thought. The hair was horrible. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just so used to looking at Jason's luscious locks that, is that a subpar haircut does not do it for me. It I do think it. that the criticisms of the hair are justified and reasonable. I, I was you. horrified by the two main actresses' hair in the film. I mean, I grew up during that era to some degree, and those were not good hairstyles. Then they're not good hairstyles now. And they are distracting, especially at the beginning. You know, show some pride in your hair. <laughs> or just cut it all off. You know, those yeah. are your two options. And that's fine, too. Uh, I'm going to go next. My issue, I, I had fun with the witchcraft. It was like, oh, wow. I mean, to open up with somebody going, Hecate, I work with Hecate. So somebody going, Hecate, oh, this is fun. And then I didn't get all the mumbly misconnections along the way. But my is, and I, I had fun on the whole movie. But um, what my issue was how bad the acting was. I wasn't going, this is a TV movie, but, it, and I think it goes back to the directing. If they were looking for a specific style, it didn't work. And even the music that went with it, it's like, I, I, these people must be better actors. I know they're TV actors, but actors is actors. Um, and I didn't watch those shows either, Richard Leal. I never liked a family drama. I grew up in the perfect family, so I never watched Little House on the Prairie. Or I watched the ones that were the broken families or Three's Company and all that. That's the world I like. Um, but but I had so much fun with the worst acting, the readings of the lines. It was almost like the director or somebody said, read it like this and then go up on that. It was like <laughs> no reality in that. And then when I couldn't get past how bad the acting and just the line recital was, I started listening to the music. I mean, I don't know who directed it. And the music is like, okay, it's horror film, hor big horror film. Now it's a rom-com. Now we're doing a <laughs> bouncy, bouncy and little thing music. And I'm like, and, and it is not supposed to stand out like that. In a good movie, you go with it. It's not hitting you over the head with it. So I had so much fun looking at how just technically, whether that's the directing or they had a vision that I didn't pick up on, but one of the worst I've ever seen as far as the reality, like buying into it. I couldn't, I couldn't. Yeah. That's the TV yeah. movie aspect of it. it, it TV movies tend, tend to have that, <laughs> that bad acting and disjointed segments but yeah so how'd you like the um the the church of satan uh logo right at the beginning the the uh baphomet logo on her on her wall it starts out it hits you hard you got everything <laughs> the candle, everything church of satan in the background the fire you got all the things the pins the whole it opens up full on every single thing about jesus is upside down unholy <laughs> She even had a goat. She had a goat. Yeah. She brought a goat to the football team. Yeah. Right? That was the, her goat. The only other stereotype she could have been is if she wore a leather jacket and dated the guy on the motorcycle and not the cheerleader captain who dated the, 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 the football captain. Mm -hmm. So so here's another interesting thing about this. So witchcraft, I'm going to keep bringing interesting things because as bad as this movie might be to y'all, it has so many interesting little tweaks about I which like I like so it. so yeah so the other big thing is most teen movies that have a witch in them most of these witch teen movies the witch is an outcast the witch is somebody like Carrie for example 
she is initiation of Sarah, all these various things. The witch is the outcast, okay, who then wants to become normal or can't fit in. So this movie is kind of like um, Carrie meets Mean Girls, and the witch is Re Regina George. So the witch is the, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Mean Girls. Regina George is the head of the um, the cool girls. She's mean. She's nasty. So this is like the witch is actually the popular girl. And that is different than most witch horror teen movies. They On Wednesdays, usually... we wear black. There you go. That's On Wednesdays, we sacrifice a goat. <laughs> so you don't you don't often see that so like in all che cheerleaders must die the witch is the outcast in in um the craft the witches are outcasts almost every teen movie they are in this case you have the witch as the popular girl as the regina george character so that's an interesting twist on the witch is usually the outcast unless it's a boy band group well yes. Then we talk Ooh, about the that, covenant. That yeah, was, you know, I'm a big fan of in which they're they're amazing. Courtney, I need yeah. a moment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Patty too. <laughs> can we watch that again? <laughs> we can. It's cold, and I need so I need to heat it up in here. <laughs> Thank you, Richard Lale, for that delightful and delicious memory. <laughs> <laughs> we got more where that came from, Courtney. I can put some on the list. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Please do. Um, all right, Heather. My opinion? Mm -hmm. I I think I've given it. I think I you know as I agree with with you guys. It's a the acting is not there. It's a made for television movie. Unfortunately, we have to watch it over YouTube. So the quality right now and i think i may have it on a vhs tape that i had to buy and watch it back when i was doing my book it's it makes it even worse um i think i would have enjoyed it if i had been old enough to watch it at the time i don't mind the hair because the hair was just bad back then i don't it I, wasn't I, that it bad doesn't, but yeah it was it literally was. was it was it was, yeah, it was. On that it was the was worst bad. I'm oh. talking specifically about the guy's hair, okay? Because it was the, the football guy. That His is... hair in the beginning was the most horrendous thing that I've ever seen. And I'm lucky I didn't throw up all over my desk while I was watching it. Because yeah, it that's was a, That's atrocious. a little extreme, Courtney. It's no. a little extreme. Yeah. You know, this was the way the I... hair was. Have you watched other movies that are even good from this era, from the early 80s? We're not talking 86, because that's a I... different we I will say there is there is one made for TV movie from the same era that I absolutely adore. I still watch it to this day, and it's Ghost Story, 1981, I think, 81 or 82. I still watch that one, and I and I and on a, on a side note on Ghost Story from that same 1981 or 82, I was just I was just a wee tot in those days. I was a little one, and. The thing it scared it scared me. It really really scared me. The hair, it was, it, no the ghost story. No, the, the, hair, the hair and ghost story. The hair scared me. The hair didn't scare me, but, <laughs> but I will say it did take place in like 19, 1927 mm -hmm. or something originally, and then it goes to like nineteen eighty one, and then the future. So the hair wasn't too too scary in that one. Um, what scared me was that that the, the the ghost story where they bury people in the first story. And my, I was terrified. I was like two. And my mother said, honey, don't worry. Why are you so scared? And I said, because they buried them alive. And she said, don't worry, honey. If you die now, they kill you first. They'll take out all your blood. And I said, that doesn't help. I was two. I was two. <laughs> so now, now I can watch. I can, I can watch Ghost Story. I could watch Ghost Story again. I can never again watch Midnight Offering. No. <laughs> and I need to address Haley Castellano in the comments here who said the hairstyle is still in existence. Hello, Justin Bieber and many other little boy actors. Here's the thing. Today, they may have the same cut, but their hair moves and is not a hair helmet that is out <laughs> like this, like a little mushroom head that just sits there like a hard little helmet and doesn't move at all. It was so distracting the way that it just didn't move. So no, it's not the same. 
Aquanet. They called it Aquanet. I used Aquanet, Patty. I know. (laughs) It was still terrible. Well then, <laughs> even by mentioning the name, even by en- even by mentioning Aquanet as a name, I can still s- I can smell it. I can it. smell it. Yeah, I can smell it. Yeah. Wait, wait. I think I think, yeah. I think I used to inadvertently get high off of Aquanet. So oh, sure. I know. But so barring was- the hair, barring the hair, which did not bother me, um, I I have I I love this movie not because it's like i said gonna win awards or there's problems yes it's not the best (laughs) i agree with richard lale and courtney's i understand why you guys are fighting it but (laughs) i i I, there's something about it i just love and i think a lot of it has to do with what it's trying to do in in the way it's representing witchcraft and it's just remarkable moment that it did in the things it did not necessarily right, but the things it did that no other film w- were doing for me. So I think my love for it is more of an academic, intellectual, witchy thing than it is like just sitting back and I'm not going to sit back and kick up and get popcorn and go, hey, a family movie night, midnight offerings. No, that's not happening. But I do think and, you know, the other big thing about this movie and I haven't even mentioned, is 1981 was the year that marks the beginning of the Satanic Panic. Now, you can't really mark the beginning of the Satanic Panic. It's a movement. It started in the 70s. But 1981 was when the court case began against the the, um, the um, daycare center in California, which is largely considered the beginning of the Satanic Panic, okay? So you have that happening 1981. So this really is one of the very last witchcraft films like this before we enter a totally different phase. The end of which interest in witchcraft in this way is really around 1981. And then we move into the satanic panic. We move into different witchcraft films until the next phase of witchcraft movies, which is when we're full on in the satanic panic. And it's all about uh, evil women who are trying to corrupt society and, and all the men in their lives. So that's later so this is really the last one we see until the craft that and has real witchcraft in it i, I, will, I think I will, oh go on i just think there's something powerful about seeing mrs cunningham from happy days <laughs> as a good witch you know she's not she's the good witch there's bad witches yeah. and good witches yep. so it's not all negative towards witchcraft and she's mm-hmm. like you know hold this stone it will protect you and i know saying, that was so Bless cute be. Be and, yeah and yes. now now I finally know why her children got dates because I never thought they were that good looking. And then, you know, <laughs> he was a witch during the Happy Days era too or something. So I thought that was charming. And I loved that there was like, I assume like she was probably like the old Wiccan lady on the corner who was positive, right? And doing things. And she was saying, do real magical things. Like I need some of her hair, right? To do this spell. Mm-hmm. Stuff. And, you know, and then it breaks down and it gets crazy at the end. But, uh, you know, as a historical curio, uh, you know, I really thought this was fun. And also I got to do my best Patty impression because I was reading it on my phone, <laughs> <laughs> on my phone, which I have never watched a movie for this show on my phone. So it was like a whole different world because, you it know, it's on YouTube. you it, it does. does. It's a different <laughs> way. Yeah, <laughs> This um, wasn't I, one you're going to miss the, the cinematography of by watching it. No, on phone. there was no good. cinematography. No, there was or no the, cinematography. Except the, the hair. moments in their no. eyes when they were acting and you felt it. it was, um, there was no hairstylist need, either. I need to bring it back to the hair for a second. Um, <laughs> wait, R.D. R. Fawcett in the comments. I was distracted. Heather, you're, what you just said, that whole thing, like I was trying so hard to like, because that was so important and it was so interesting, but I was giggling because the broccoli cut, <laughs> I'm a barber and that's what we call that miserable hair. And which now one? all I can, right? No, no, no. Which is the broccoli cut? I'm assuming the, the um, football guy, because that's all I can picture now is that man with broccoli on his head. And now... I've changed my mind. 
I can tolerate the hair because I'm picturing it as broccoli. But that comment, <laughs> I just want to thank Art for that <laughs> because that was amazing. It's a reminder to eat your vegetables. It oh was a public God. service announcement in addition <laughs> to being a witch film. It was. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something real honest, and this may come as a shock, but I would have rather watched The Witch That Came From the Sea than this. We can make that we can make that on the list. We can put the witch that came from the sea on the list. Wait till you see necromancy next week. It's, well, it's, it's from that oh era. God. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I think I'm sick. <coughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Let me check out the hairstyles first and then I'll see. I'll take my temperature and I'll see where it's at. Yeah. We, needed, we needed some movies that had historical witchcraft in them. I mean, historical witchcraft as in modern historical contemporary witchcraft, not as historical witchcraft, meaning 14th century. So, yeah. She's get, a witch. Get, she's a witch. Get, well, I, I that's, historical, that's historical witchcraft right there. I, do. I like the 14th century witchcraft. Me well, too. We need a little modern stuff happening, so we we can we see that here, which is why uh, watch is why this got on the list because it's super it's it's very interesting. I I was surprised. I, I had to watch a lot of movies, guys, and this a lot of witch movies. And let me tell you, this was not the worst one. There are far worse ones, and I'm happy to bring them to your attention, and we can watch them. And okay. I don't think I think we'll have five blank screens. <laughs> 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 We're not coming on tonight. Forget it. <laughs> Lights out. Ever I'm sorry for what any of us ever did to offend you that you would threaten us with something worse than this. Oh, no, no, no. This is, I don't already, even this is, Richard Lil. We've actually already watched ones worse than this in my mind. I don't think Richard this is Lil. even oh, close Richard to the worst Richard film we've off. ever seen. I turned my light off. You turned his light I, off. I can't imagine any film being worse than this one. <laughs> oh, well, let me, let me, let me just, that's a challenge I accept, Richard Lil. No! <laughs> <laughs> I got some from brain damaged films in the late nineties that oh. we could we could definitely take a look at. Well I, I, brain damage. I mean all we have films, to, I mean we just have to watch your highness again or the killing I'm tree. Glad we you? The killing no, tree. Yeah. Or the sword yeah. in the stone it's finally. Too much because Jason is the one that keeps bringing up your highness because he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. yeah. Jason, oh. and your rebuttal on that? No. <laughs> See, he doesn't. Yeah, no silence. I, I'm not. Yeah, uh, just, just a, just a failure on every level in that film. Mm -hmm. And I love. I'm Danny turning McBride. my light on. I love I'm Danny turning... McBride. I don't have a light to turn off tonight. I, I I'm feel turning it on. I feel unarmed in this show. All I can do is put my thumb over the, <laughs> over the lens. It's just not the same as turning the light off not the and same. express my discontent. Um, All now, right. Now, well, now, um, now, now now Rob is like walking through their place and turning lights off for me, but he can't. It's not enough. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying. It's like you're camping. You're camping. You're having to rough it a little bit. It's it's rough. It's been it's been tough. So on that note, while we have you, do you have the man key minute um, moment? I was traveling today, so I'm not sure that it's actually done, but I'm going to read what is here. Uh, <laughs> it can't be worse than the haircuts. So It's true. Or the acting. Or the music. <laughs> they, or the movie. Bad. Tonight on ABC, it's all your favorite <laughs> stars. That girl from Little House on the Prairie. You know, the other one who wasn't the star. And Teresa and Bill Bob from America's Hill People, the Waltons. <laughs> And let's not forget Mrs. Cunningham from Happy Days and the general manager of WKRP, the big guy himself, Arthur Carlson. Together, this wacky group of TV favorites will fend off goat attacks, raven attacks, and most menacingly of all, house cat attacks. It's witchcraft like you've never seen it before when Patrick Cassidy, the other Cassidy to the more famous brothers Sean and David, falls head over heels in love with a new girl at school after knowing her for just 60 hours. <laughs> this committed, not at all desperate seeming couple will have to overcome a scorned witch, the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter, and one of this century's only Hecatite witches. Hecatite, it's the most powerful stone on a witch's <laughs> altar. And you know the saying 
Hell hath no fury like a Hecatite witch scorned. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. We're all on topic. You if she's a lot of fun stuff with those silly witchcraft mis mis uh, nomers and, and Hec mistakes that they might hecatite. <laughs> hecatite is amazing. <laughs> if she's like, the seventh daughter of the seventh daughter, where are her sisters? They're all. She's the youngest, and so all of them are in college already. They mention that, although her dad's obsession with her is a little on the creepy side. I that is. Yeah. A little and then, like her visiting him during work and stuff, and the mom's like, "Why would you do that?" Why would you go see your dad? It's it felt like much more sinister. Well, if she wasn't my daughter, there was a lot of <laughs> but daddy, but daddy, no. I didn't like it. It made me uncomfortable. Yeah, that was a little weird. You don't have to um, put my face. I just yelled that. So and the mom was the seventh daughter as well. Yeah. And that's the folk tradition. The seventh child of the seventh child is supposed to be clairvoyant and, and magical. That's a, actually a legitimate folk tradition. Absolutely. Yeah. One of Iron Maiden's best albums is Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, I, um, Yeah, that was a very talented cat. I must, the best acting, I think, was the cat. <laughs> Do you know, do we have to talk about when animals attack in this movie though? I mean, because there's three different there's three different parts. Like you have it's the crow or a raven attacking the, yeah. the, the house. Oh cat. yeah, in the car, the yeah. raven. Yeah. Raven. And the goat. And then the goat at the end. I laughed out loud when the cat attacked. I mean, it was so cheesy and so terrible. And the bird in the car and they're just all swatting at it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it was really bad. It was really bad and hilarious. I mean, that's that's like half wands up just for the animal attacking. I mean, because you'll never see anything like it anywhere else. We just were missing an owl, I think, and maybe a snake. And then snake? we would have had no. all the witch, witchcraft animals all in one. Oh. Yeah. Courtney quotes? Uh, I have a, a couple. <laughs> it wasn't a great quotable movie, was it? It was not. Here's the thing. It was not. And then I was distracted. Uh, I did write some quotes down, and then I was distracted by making fun of them instead of taking down quotes. So do not expect a lot from me from this. Um, the the one, the girl with, like, the short hair, she was, like, the original girl, uh, not the Little, new girl. Little House and, in the Prairie. Vivian. Okay, I've never watched... Little House on the Prairie, so I oh, don't you're know. missing out. No, you're not. No, <laughs> I, I, apparently I'm not. Um, but every time she said anything, or anyone even remotely tried to interact with her at all, or like in her vicinity, she would roll her eyes, and it, which was a mood. I did appreciate that. I was trying to find something good, so she'd be like, <sighs> and then, <laughs> um, so at one point she goes. <laughs> I could do without the icy stare, David. And I was like, okay. Um, and then at one point, I think it was the football player who said, if you don't mind being seen with this week's number one case of the flu. And I was like, Ugh. like, please. Um, and then, <laughs> then um, I'm Vivian said, I'm warning you, Robin, you have one day to leave town peacefully. If not, you can leave in a box. And I was I mean, I, I feel like I might threaten people with that at, at some point. Um, and then David says, tell the police they'll put me in a basket weaving class for sure. And Robin says, the police have other things to worry about than your extracurricular activities, dear. Which, basket weaving? Um, so, yeah, not a lot of good ones. Um, but I did want to know, I did make a note also of the way that Little House on the Prairie slammed the baton down. Because I, she was, like, really mad about something. She, like, picked up the baton and, like, held it like this. And I was, like, ah! With, like, eye rolls. Like, it was it was a lot. And the hair was its own character that I couldn't quote. So I was and a little why was she attacked with a clock? That's what I want to know. Why? Of all of the things in, in someone's house, knives and scissors and sofas and taxidermy, a clock? I mean, that was weird. It took me by surprise. I like what I guess because we didn't know of her powers yet. But I'm like, what? what? I guess she has a face that stops time. <laughs> I like I liked how everybody knew that she was evil and bad. Like the principal comes and talks to her. Like 
every time you're around people, they die. Can you? They die. <laughs> and then she sort of turns it and like everybody knows that she's doing these things, right? And yet nobody cares enough to stop her. Not until Robin shows up. You know, Robin connected with with uh, Robin Hood, and it's a magical name for decade for centuries. I thought that was funny. <laughs> like uh, Courtney's no. eyes are only. <laughs> oh, I do the same oh. thing, Courtney. Oh, oh the, oh, the whole thing. And honestly, and honestly all that stuff and, comes from Margaret Murray. I mean, that stuff is historical in books. In in Hollywood cinema, uh, Robin is not a common name for witches. And I actually have a, a couple paragraphs on the names they use. They use they tend to use Sarah. They um, Vivian is more common, but Sarah is one of them. They use they tend Hollywood likes to use the names that come out of the Salem witch trials as, oh, as common names that, that you're going to find in the. So you know you think back. So Robin is not actually common for Hollywood, even if it's found historically otherwise it's, hollywood didn't use robin very very regularly you really have to shout out time <laughs> I, was, I was thinking what well, i didn't say anything funny what's going on thank you colin i love being upstage <laughs> All right. On that note, I think it is time for us to vote. Oh God. Wands up, wands down. I left my wand over there, but I'm 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 going to not vote because um I mine is down here anyway, so it's down here. It's down. Mine is so you, far you, down that I can't lift vote. It. Can you not vote? Well, I mean, okay, I'll vote. I have I have a bottle of water. This is my vote. It's way up I'll here. Vote for, and I'll vote for Rich Little. Now it's in the floor. All right. We have angled, very much angles. What what angle do you call that? A um, Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Yeah. Ten, yeah. Two o'clock, 10 o'clock. And uh, all right, everybody out there, wands up and horns up from Kelvin. A spirit broke chair trying to fix it. Uh, yeah, it's one of those nights. I'm for things are breaking. Anybody else? Wands up. Wands. Oh, we got a down from Haley. We got a down from Marshall. Uh, down from Mary Jane. Up from Mrs. Cunningham from Haley. Uh, but Haley also gave the whole thing a thumbs down. Okay. One. Oh, small town. Joshua's oh, yeah. got wands up. Wands for the skeleton in the classroom. <laughs> call it. Call it. <laughs> Wands up for effort despite the cast losing their ability to act during the movie. <laughs> I'm going to give the a wands up for Colin tonight. Wands up for Colin. They, they really did. Wands there, way there was down a, for RD. There was a question earlier, um, which we didn't, which we kind of skipped over because we were talking. That that is interesting. I think it was Robert Hicks that asked about whether all the casting and all the negative, it might have not been Robert, it might have been several, but all of the spells they were using, all of the legitimate witchcraft that was actually being somehow seeped into it, let's call it that, um, did they have anybody on set because they could have actually cast something, they could have actually, uh, yes, they could have, and actually, there, as far as, during this period of time, there's very few films that record if they have anybody on set or not, and there may have been, um, and then I, I do know that there was cases where a lot of where Hollywood did consult with real witchcraft during the 70s, whether there was someone on set actually trying to do protective circles while they did this or help. Most likely not. It isn't really until the last five or six years that you see that level of interest. Um, we have consultants starting in the 90s for real. We don't see them on set doing actually working with magic to protect the set until the last five or six years. I mean, did you so, see the witchcraft books that they had though? Like the high school guys, like I got this out from the library, and it looks like <laughs> some sort of 17th century grimoire. Like that's just sitting in your high school library. Good job, dude. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and there was there was a couple films where you see consultants, and they're usually listed as spiritual consultants and stuff. And I'm always looking for that. Sometimes they're just not recorded, and they and sometimes they you know they just pick up a book, like you know which is exactly Jason what you're talking of they pick up a book maybe Paul Houston if Paul Houston did consult on cases he might have gotten on the phone at points but there was nobody actually doing protective circles around the set to make sure they actually didn't summon Barabbas Satanus and Hecatite so you know, <laughs> well, most likely not at this point 
Our producer Rob just said they probably, if they consulted anybody, was from the Bodhi Tree on Melrose, which was our one, not even a cult, metaphysical, new age, a cult, witchcraft. Right. I mean, that's kind of almost all we had, except for in Long Beach, we had very witchy Eye of the Cat. Yeah. But the Bodhi Tree became the place to just hang. Yeah. And it, and they were and a lot of the a lot of the pagan and witchy people were like um, even the, the Satanists at the time coming out of the sixties were very popular in Hollywood during the sixties and seventies. So there was the stuff was going around whether it was full on or not, and so there was just enough to make this movie feel a little real. Yeah, although and a little bit off at the same time. Movie what that's really good. Mind. What's that really was, great about this film, though, is now you can go to Mystery Control and order your own Hecatite stone. <laughs> <laughs> we are now your exclusive purveyors of Hecatite. Hecatite. Available Hecatite. nowhere else. Only from us. <laughs> Indeed. Your own magic, very powerful black cat. All, all I know is all these movies, they get the witchcraft good, they get the witchcraft bad. And I've been practicing for decades. I, I've never been able to like light someone's house on fire with my cat. <laughs> I, no? No, really? <laughs> no, I just, huh. I mean, However, it's like have crap. you tried with it's Willow, huh? have, you try, have you tried using Willow? That might, I, well, yeah, we'll send it. She's low. She could sneak on it. Maybe that's it. Um, I Maybe that's why I like things like practical magic. And, and they get out there a little bit. They could fly off the roof, but it's real ish. Yeah. Yeah. I agree well, wholeheartedly with that. I think that's well, why that, that one in particular touches me, like touches mm -hmm. my heart so hard is like, that's what made me realize that I could be a witch too. Well, it wasn't, and that, and that's a '90s one. It, it's this is the progression that we we look at, and this is a progression that fascinates me. Is that it, this is the first time in the '70s that we start to see real stuff. It's the it's the first time. It's not right. It's not inspirational. It doesn't necessarily. Well, this one had positive witches in it, but it, it, and then the '90s we see the next progression. So, yeah. and here here's the thing. I'll give it a wands up for being important and doing its job, but I'll, a big old wands down for ripping away an hour and 33 minutes of my life. Also, <laughs> Colin <laughs> is at it again. I find matches and gasoline work best. <laughs> but, <laughs> see, Courtney, the joy, though, of watching these films on your phone, and I know that you often watch movies while driving, so maybe I don't have to explain. <laughs> Excuse you me, can do like five my other car. things at the same time. Which means, you know, you're not wasting your whole 90 minutes. Like, I packed. You know what, though? I was watching it on my phone, and I was trying to do other things, and I could not get over the, well, whatever, mother. Good night, mom. I yeah. couldn't get over that. I couldn't. I couldn't. I played video I games play while I was watching it, and I every time she was like, "Daddy," I got like whiplash to be like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what?" <laughs> yeah, she was pretty annoying. Someone need to put her in her room and take her phone away. Yeah, yeah, but she didn't have a phone yet, right? Eighty-one, you didn't have a phone. Nope. Oh, she she may have had the you know. The Oh yeah, yeah. They did use phone. they did use real phones in the or old fashioned phones yeah. in that movie. You know, they did. Yeah, they. Did, I mean, they had phones, but not. But yeah. she's a witch, so she could have used smoke signals. Mm -hmm. She could have. <laughs> well, she could have just sent bird messages. I mean, she could she control could those. Those the crows. The back, she could have taped the message to the back of the clock and sent it away. <laughs> I think I think Christy Cragen is is. Uh, uh, sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong, but I think you're you're speaking truth right there. Her her daughter talks to her like that. I think that's something that all moms of teenage teenagers will understand. So the rolling of the eyes and okay, slamming of the doors and all that. Yeah, that's real. Shoot. She was ruthless to her mom too. Like, I don't want to end up like you. I'm going to use my powers and get out of this like crappy house and all that. And I don't, such you know, a teenage dad thing. sucks. She was terrible. She's terrible. Go back to that little house on the prairie. Get the hell out of here. You're mean. Go churn yeah. some butter. Yeah. Just take all her right. cell phone away and her hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> and her aquanet. And her aquanet. 
<laughs> my hair issue was more with her than the boys because the popular girls got to have good hair. The most popular yeah. girl, the cheerleader in school has got to have good hair. I had a problem with everyone's hair, fairly. Just um, I, across the board. I, I just couldn't imagine that Vivian was like popular in school because of that hair. Like, you know, I saw her and I was like, well, she must be an outcast. And then like, how are you dating the quarterback of the football team with that hair? That would have never happened at my school. Also, like, she doesn't look anybody in the eye ever because she's too busy, like, uh, uh. <laughs> she, All right, so that is an 80s thing. That is such an 80s thing. Like, oh, my God, like, gag me with a spoon. Oh, my God. <laughs> we, we can look up our producer Rob's, like, yearbook photo in here. Apparently. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's you the next thing. Go. Throwback Thursdays on the Witches Movie Coven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Albums. You found gold. Wow. Um, yeah. All right. So let's remind everybody again. What are we seeing next week? What are we seeing next week, Heather? We are seeing Necromancy. It's with Orson Welles. It's one of the early 1970s horror witch movies. <laughs> Colin, Colin's on a roll. See, Colin is on a roll. Colin Wendy is on a roll. Quarterback loved her, but his guide dog was skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost Courtney now. She's gone for the night. <laughs> the Courtney attack. Um, all right, we have a, just a couple, so minutes, a couple minutes left. So Ooh. everybody, next week we are doing necromancy. Mm -hmm. What year is it from? Do you know? It's oh. like seventy-one or seventy-two. Orson Welles. I love that. We're doing necromancy. Come back next week and watch us raise the dead. <laughs> exactly. My bones. This is another one with tight witchcraft uh, connection. So um, we'll be talking about um, witchcraft and contemporary witchcraft and all kinds of good stuff. So, okay. And I might have the flu. <laughs> oh, no, no. you got to watch Orson Welles play Mr. Cato as the head of a witch coven, a devil We're working gonna... on a satanic witch coven. We're going to see what the hair looks like first before I decide. This is early 70s. It's all long and straight. And I think it's a bunch of old people anyway, like elderly. I think I think the 70s is how I got the 70s movies was with the long straight hair is how I got confused about what movie I was watching yes. when I actually was accidentally watching The Witch Who Came From the Sea. And it's from that era. Great. Cool. I might have the flu. Hey, Robert. <laughs> All right. Who has anything coming up? I'm gonna I'm gonna go first because I've got to go pack. I'm going to be in Virginia tomorrow. Anybody anywhere near um, Hanover, Virginia? I have no idea where it is. I'm flying to Charlotte. I'm flying to Richmond. Um, have an, Hanover Tavern Paracon. Oh, um, Rob Thompson is going to be there. Thompson is going to be there. All sorts of fun people from the school. So if you're near it. Um, I've got some other things because look at our producer Rob made these beautiful, beautiful signs for us. Arizona, I just confirmed that. And uh, who else wants to show their new little sign? Go ahead. Uh, I've got something coming up in February and a very busy March. Uh, the, the closest one is February 22nd, Convocation in Detroit one of the largest magical gatherings in the Midwest. So I'm very excited to be back in Michigan where I used to live and I cannot wait to hit that four degree weather. Ugh. Okay. Heather. Um, I maybe, I don't know if I'm going to have something in February or not. There's still some things in the work, but then I am going to be out of order. I will be in March. I will be at Pagenicon. I will see Jason there. Um, looking forward to that. And then Mystic South in July. I don't have a ton of travel, but I am in Atlanta. Um, so if you're in Atlanta, just uh, mention, uh, let me know, and maybe we can meet up. Beautiful. Courtney. Oh, that's me. I don't have a little sign yet because I forgot to respond to Rob with some information. But I, <laughs> if you are in the Salem area come February, um, I believe it's select nights from February 2nd to the 14th. You can come check out my tour baby, which is the anti Valentine's Day tour. It is stories of love gone wrong in Salem, all the ways that if you fall in love, you will get murdered. So it's on a trolley, nice and warm. You get hot chocolate and you get some laughs. Um, and it is, you can go to um, SalemGhostTours.com to get your tickets. They're already on sale. Uh, also, check me out on Scared and Alone. 
um, which may or may not be coming back soon. We're gonna we're working on that. Um, so some new episodes, hopefully. Um, and other than that, I will be watching The Covenant because it is free soon, <laughs> and I want to be warm. So. Richard Lamb. Um, well, after watching tonight's film, the only thing that's coming up is my lunch. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. But, so but I teach it. I teach at University of Magicus. Uh, I'm I, I'm there all the time, and I'm here in New Orleans. And uh, you know, I, I'm I'm at thegentlemanpsychic.com for all of your clairvoyant needs. And we're anywhere uh, gentlemen psychics are sold. That would be me. That that's where I am. The gentleman. Yes. And I'm feeling very, very generous tonight. So Richard Lael is one of our best, original, amazing teachers. I teach there. If any of you email me, I would like to give you a free class from Richard Lael or myself or Father Sebastian. <gasps> a free class to check out universitymagicus.com or magicu.org. Email me for a free class. It's inexpensive anyway. It's great. We teach witchcraft and uh, mediumship, psychic development, paranormal stuff. We across the board, lots of teachers of lots of slightly different paths along the way. So just email me at patty at pattynegri.com and say you want a free class. And it could be Richard Lael's class, my class, or Father Sebastian's class. Wow. Yeah. That is very generous. That is generous. As I'm leaving for weather in Virginia, it's supposed to be between eight and 20 degrees. I've, I'm, I'm wearing a cloak because it's under 60 here right now. <laughs> I can't but, handle But those. first, the Patty Jason meetup in just a few minutes. Oh, I know, just a few minutes. Pat, coming to my Hollywood Hills home. <laughs> and February also, the, anybody come to L.A.? It's Endless Night Vampire Ball. It's also kind of an anti-Valentine's, non-Valentine's, all-Valentine's Day. But it is uh, the, the 18th. It's amazing. We have a new location at the Mayan. Um, so go to L.A., go to New Orleans, go to everywhere. That's it. The Salem. Oh, wait. Oh, we're late. Oh, my God. We went late. I guess we cackle or we do Hecate, Hecate, or Pate. Hecate. 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 I think 